Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hope you're doing well. Got a first impression for you guys. Normally, I would go ahead and unbox it right here and do the whole, you know, reveal and then spray it on and give you my first impression that way. But I already opened the box and I already sprayed on the fragrance. But a little bit of good news there. There's not going to be that kind of gap that I have where I spray it on, give you the first impression, then come back after the dry down. I've already got my thoughts kind of arranged, sort of. Fragrance is Dolce & Gabbana's The One Gold. Eau de Parfum Intense, but I think it's really just the one gold. So I'm gonna show you guys the presentation, which is an absolute fingerprint magnet, and I'll break down this fragrance for you, let you guys know what I think about it. Let's jump into it. Now this one I bought from Dillard's, and they got it to me pretty quickly. I feel like it was maybe three, four days, something like that, so not too bad. Don't remember the exact price. I feel like it was $95-ish? Yeah, I could look that up right now, but I'm not going to. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the presentation. Yeah, I'm trying to clean off these fingerprints, but yeah, it, it's not helping. So here we have the box. It's a little bit reflective. Can you tell? On the front, you've got the name of the house, name of the fragrance. Again, size and concentration, which is uh, Eau de Parfum Intense DG up at the top. Nothing on the sides. On the back, you have your ingredients. On the bottom, your badge code and your barcode. Badge code is 1141BM. And here's the bottle. It's the standard Dolce & Gabbana The One bottle, only now it is fully done up in reflective gold. And I keep saying it, but uh, it looks really nice right up until you pick it up. And then it looks like a crime scene where people are lifting fingerprints. On the front, you've got Dolce & Gabbana's The One, and that's pretty much it. Just gold all the way around, badge code on the bottom, cap clicks into place, and I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys so you can see the atomizer, but it's the same as all the one atomizers. There we go. I got this in the same time as Herrera Bad Boy Superstars, which I have not opened up yet, so I can't tell you yet whether that's just the exact same as the original Bad Boy or not. This one opens up fresh, spicy, and sweet with a whole bunch of citrus. The citrus in here, not really like a realistic fresh citrus, just a really sweet citrus. And one thing that I'll say about the opening here is it does not have very much punch off my skin. So when I spray on the one gold, it just kind of, it just kind of flops onto my skin and just kind of lays there. Ugh. I don't get a whole bunch of this sparkle. I don't get a whole bunch of projection in the opening. It just kind of is. It doesn't smell bad or anything. It smells really sweet and a little spicy, like I said, fresh spicy, but there's not much oomph to it. Now, just by comparison, because I was wondering, you know, maybe it's pretty much in line with the other fragrances from the one in the opening, as far as how much it pumps out. And some of the early ones, like the one Eau de Toilette, maybe it is, but I compared it to this one, which is the one Eau de Parfum Intense. I decided to check this one out because of course, this is Eau de Parfum Intense. This is gold Eau de Parfum Intense. So I wanted to see which one of these projects the most. And also they're basically bizarro versions of each other. Gold with black writing, black with gold writing. And I'll tell you guys that this one, Eau de Parfum Intense, does seem to project off my skin anyway, quite a bit more in the opening. So that's a little bit of a letdown, but it is the one. It's not really well known for having great performance as a fragrance line. So you can forgive that a bit. Another thing that this bottle is great for is functioning as a carnival mirror. So when you look into it, your face looks all weird and freaky and distorted, and you can just kind of keep doing this and it's mesmerizing. Within about five minutes, you get this little bit of herbaceousness from Cleary Sage. Not a whole bunch, but you do pick that up and you get cardamom mixing in slightly. Again, not a whole lot of it, frankly. What you do get a lot of though, pretty quickly, is the base notes, especially vetiver and a bit of patchouli. Again, this is based entirely off my first wearing. So it is possible the more I wear this, the more things you know make sense to me and the more I pick out of the fragrance as it dries down and stuff like that. But that is for another video, another time after I've been able to wear this a lot. 
You also get a little bit of cardamom that kind of mixes in as the fragrance dries down. Again, a little bit of that sweet, fresh spiciness. The citrus dissipates pretty quickly. And then you get that vetiver and patchouli, which comes across with kind of a, a clean earthiness or a fresh earthiness, if that makes sense. So yeah, when you hear fresh earthiness or clean earthiness, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense. What I mean by that is you can almost like in the back of your palate, when you smell the fragrance, get that, that tinge of an earthiness that you might sometimes pick up from vetiver or patchouli, but it doesn't have that, that dirty aspect to it. It doesn't have that edge to it. Another thing, the vetiver that comes out in this, to me anyway, off my first wearing, is the most prominent bass note. And the vetiver in here smells similar to the vetiver in the one gray. So to an extent, in a simplified way of breaking this down, you could say that a lot of the base here is borrowed from the one gray. And then over top of it, they put this fleeting, sweet, citrus and fresh spice mix. And the performance here, at least best as I can tell, is not great. It's last about six hours on my skin, but for a lot of that time, it sat really close because even in the opening, when I first spray this on, and I've sprayed it on pretty heavily, actually, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of push to it. So it seems to me that it's gonna be more one of those fragrances that has moderate longevity. You know, you can still pick it up after five, six hours, but you gotta get pretty close. And as I mentioned before, I did spray this one on as well, and this one does seem to be outperforming gold by a decent amount. Now I had my wife smell this fragrance, especially in the opening. She said it smells nice, she likes it. And that would be uh, expected because it is sweet, it's pleasing, it's easy to wear. And it's got good versatility too, because as it dries down, gets that, that vetiver going. And you know, I'm a sucker for vetiver. You can wear it anywhere, anytime, it's good. There's a little bit of amber wood in there as well, which helps give it more of a, I guess you'd say modern masculine feel with the vetiver instead of having it come across really old school. You know, it doesn't have that dry feeling to it, that grassy feeling to it. It doesn't really encompass the entirety of the vetiver root. You're not going to get that smoke or anything. It's just clean, easy to wear, like I said. So I think this is going to be a little half and half as far as how people perceive it. People that are looking for something more along the lines of the One Eau de Parfum, probably not going to like it quite as much. And then with that simplistic kind of dry down, at least how it's coming across here, a lot of people are gonna ride it off. Because one thing that it does smell, to me anyways, is simple. Because you spray it on, you get that quick hit of that citrus that's very sweet, along with that spiciness, and very quickly it segs into the dry down. I mean, pretty fast. You can feel that patchouli and that vetiver coming. Just, you know, five minutes in, you can you can feel it. It's like running. Ah, the vetiver is just like T2, you know? It's like, get the top out of here, I'm coming. So first impression wise, what do I feel about it? Don't love it, I think it's okay. Probably something I'd give like a 6.5, maybe a seven just based off of how it smells. Is it as attention grabbing as I was hoping it would be? No, no, it's not. I don't, I don't think it's gonna be one of those, you know, top notch Dolce & Gabbana the One flankers. And I think as far as flankers released this year, that Luminous Night is better, but Luminous Night is also way harder to find. That one I had to order from Harrods. Yeah, so I had to order that one from the UK. And in terms of seasons, this comes across more like a spring and fall kind of fragrance. It doesn't have that push that you would expect for a winter fragrance, but it also does have a good amount of sweetness that maybe you wouldn't expect for summer. So more spring, fall, and as far as daytime or nighttime, either one. So there we go, Dolce & Gabbana's The One Gold Eau de Parfum Intense. The best part is looking at yourself in the bottle and seeing how freaking weird you look. All right, that's gonna do it for me, guys. If you smell this one, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. You know I'm gonna see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.